When you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch you. Lali Deshkal. That's what so many of you tell me when I'm interviewing folks for the Advanced Market Mastery course, or Accelerated Market Mastery, as we're calling it this time, which is what it is. And so many of you have come to us because you finally stopped chasing the wrong things and you realized the number one focus needs to be price movement and needs to be accurately following trends. And trends are not that hard to follow if you know what a weekly vertical crossover is and then you master the exit strategies. Now we cover that in the first month of the Advanced Accelerated Market Mastery course. Second month, we cover options. Third month, we cover building your own virtual personal wealth fund, your own little mini hedge fund that we want you to practice managing till you get it down successfully. So let's jump into these charts today. We see everything up but bonds. Let's jump into the S&P 500. And of course, as we zoom in here on the weekly chart, we can see that our weekly chart still in a confirmed up move. The price percent oscillator is flattening. It's tried to move above that 200 period moving average line and just doesn't seem to have enough energy yet to do that. Even though it is an up day, 1.50% for the S&P, what do we see drawing on our Heiken Ashi candlesticks? We see a red down candle forming. That's showing us a deceleration in price movement. We see that price is, of course, below the weekly trend line. It is below the two-day trend line. We'll get in that in just a minute. Derivative oscillator losing momentum. Price percent oscillator gained a little momentum. Again, with that up move, if you don't know what our Heiken Ashi candlesticks are about, look for our training. It's the most popular on the internet. Several hundred thousand people have listened to it, studied it, want you to have it. Just put in Heiken Ashi candlesticks. You'll see us there at the top. Now, what do we see when we look at the two-day chart? Remember, we had that cross with the two-day crossing through the weekly back on the 24th Wednesday of last week. That was followed by a strong down candle. And what we see drawing first day of this latest is another. Now, when we look closely, we can see, well, let's check out what the low is. The low, 299.42 previously. The low so far, 298.93. So it is hitting a lower low there. And again, that red Heiken Ashi candlestick, you can see it's not going down at the same stronger angle it had been with the up day it it um, it pulled that up some uh, but again still heading down derivative oscillator still gaining downward momentum and we got to finish drawing that two-day candle on Tuesday if we look at the four-hour chart that's where we see the up movement for the day finally weighing in uh, some indecision in the morning and then up move in the afternoon but again not recovering where it had gone down in that previous two-day candle. Price percent oscillator is about flat. Derivative oscillator is losing downward momentum. So we'll continue to watch, see what there is to learn here. What we see overall, of course, is look where the market peaked all the way back on mid-June. Now that we get to the end of June, it continues to devolve somewhat. Is it going to gain its energy? Just going to sort of digest all those gains and pop up again? Don't know. Is it going to crash? Don't know. But we're going to watch it, and the market, the charts are going to tell us. And we will bide our time patiently. Oh, great training for you today on liquidity. My folks, in today's world, liquidity is what it's all about. I don't want you to practice trading mutual funds, closed-in mutual funds with huge surrender fees and those kinds of things. I want you to practice trading things that are highly liquid. Oh, maybe like the four ETFs we track every day, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, 20-year bonds and gold. Yeah, that might be something for you to practice. Look, first weekly red candle we have forming so far. Now, this is just one day into the weekly candle, but look, the S&P has finally started losing some energy. A red doji pretty much is forming. Price percent oscillator losing some momentum. Derivative oscillator losing some momentum, slowing down. And again, that's important to see. 
Look at the two-day chart. Of course, it crossed over going down back on Friday the 26th, uh, just like the S&P did. And what do we see happening? A red down candle forming, pushing through the weekly trend line. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Four-hour chart, we can see it was down in the morning, recovered some in the afternoon. It was up for the day 1.09%, but it doesn't obviate the obvious slowing down of the market. Now, could it digest all this upward movement that we did so well on and then turn around and go higher? It could. We'll wait. We will see. We see we don't we don't have to rush that. We can let the market tell us. We don't have to take crazy risks. We're trend followers and guys, if you remember, let's look back. Did we have plenty of time to get out when our weekly vertical crossover crossed? Yes. Did we have plenty of time to get in and do well? Yes. Did we have to take any of the risk in the middle when things were in flux? No. That's why we follow trends. That's why we use the weekly vertical crossover. Hogs get slaughtered. You can't be greedy. You want to be smart. First rule of trading, don't lose money. Second rule, make money. We want you to practice trade to show yourself approved. Follow the rules. Why do we have the rules? Because the rules work most all the time, and they reduce your risk significantly in your practice trades. Now, what do we see on the weekly chart when it comes to treasury bonds going into the third week of up movement? Now, we started off this week down. It is so hard the way I have my screen lit for me to see. That's a little, well, I believe it was down for the day 0.31%. That's the best I can read. Um, but when we look at the weekly chart, we see a green up candle that's forming. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator still heading down. Go to the two-day chart. What do we see there? We see basically about the same place it was on Friday. Yes, about the same. See, did we reach a higher high? The high on the Thursday-Friday candle was 165.32. 165.27, so didn't even reach a higher high. So really what we're seeing there is sideways slippage. We go to the four hour and that's where you can really see it. You can see things sliding sideways and down a little bit. So again, we'll continue to keep our eye on TLT since we had that two day crossover. Going up, we don't have a trade in the down movement. Now, if we have a recross sometime in the future going down before the weekly chart crosses over going up, that could give us a jumping in point for an inverse trade. That is what we call a two-day recross. We'll see if indeed that occurs. That's where we are on bonds. Lastly, we go to gold. Gold, remember we had gold is... is huh. Usually I like gold. Gold has really let me down lately. We had the weekly vertical crossover going down on gold back around the 5th of June. And then what did it do? It went sideways and up on us and then crossed back over very weakly, very weakly at the end of last week. We see things so far starting the week with an up move. Again, up not a lot, 0.05%. The high in the last week was 166.99. So far this week, 166.80. So it's not reaching a higher high at this point. We'll continue to watch and see how things go. Derivative oscillator is gaining some upward momentum. Pretty much laminated on that price percent oscillator, although it is blue above red. We go to the two-day chart. We can see a green candle trying to form after a prior red candle. First day of this latest one, price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. Half day chart, we can see again up movement in the morning tempered in the afternoon. Pretty much a sideways slide, if not a little bit down on that four hour chart. So gold disappointing us. It's our first and only failure on our weekly vertical crossover this year, the one back on the week ending June the 5th on gold. Of the 12 we have had, 11 have been successful. This is the one that hasn't. So we'll continue to watch, see what gold's going to do for us. What does all of this tell us? The flux between gold, between bonds, 
and the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Well, we're seeing weakening in stocks and we're seeing strengthening overall in bonds and gold. What is that telling us? Let's see, what would that tell you? That maybe, maybe there is coming a rollover of the market? Maybe. We're not going to bet on that yet. We're going to keep that in the back of our minds. We're going to put that in our show notes. If you guys have our traders' journals, you know how to use those. If you don't, we do have traders' journals for sale. You can also get the free PDFs in your show notes every day. If you're not a subscriber, you need to be one. Not only because those PDFs are in the email you get every day along with our daily market review and our once-a-week comprehensive review and forecast, you also get discounts for TC2000, which is a trading platform we use. You also get information about the Accelerated Market Mastery course, information about how to purchase our book, and you get all of our trainings like the one today. And don't forget, toward the end of the week, we're going to relaunch once again the Options Made Simple, our three-part options course that you only get as a subscriber. Now, let's keep moving, and that's free. Chartingwealth.com, go sign up. What about Bitcoin? Bitcoin's done nothing as far as any kind of movement over the course of the day. I don't quite understand. I'm just going to be honest with you guys, as I always am. Don't quite understand how uh, the New York Bitcoin uh, index, actually, New York uh, Stock Exchange Bitcoin index actually works. There's no movement on it for the day yet. We do see a red down candle forming price percent oscillator heading down. It's telling us there's something going on there. We look at the two-day chart, and of course it shows us movement down. Um, but again, not seeing any movement at all or any net change in price. We go to the four-hour chart, and it shows us again movement in the morning and the afternoon, a slowdown in the down movement. Not sure what all that means. I mean, we are trying our best to track it for you. It, if what we're seeing on our charts is that, of course, Bitcoin peaked all the way back on May the 8th and has really been slight. It, it went up a little more. Well, it didn't go up to the high, but it sort of tracked up and now it's tracking down, getting closer to a weekly vertical crossover going down. Now, remember, one reason we pay attention to Bitcoin is remember how precipitously it fell off when the market fell off? Well, look, look at what Bitcoin's doing. Is that maybe an outlier that's telling us what's happening to? Perhaps it is. We'll continue to watch, try our best to track it, see what there is to see and learn there. What about real estate? Same thing happened with real estate, my friends, when the market crashed. Look at what real estate's been doing after it peaked back on the week ending the 12th of June, sideways and down, starting the week off again up 1.93%. But we see our Hakenashi candlestick is again forming red. Derivative oscillators losing momentum. That price percent oscillator was flat, trying to head up some. So we'll pay attention to that. Look at the two day. It crossed over going down back on Friday, the 26th, this past Friday. We have a uh, solid green down candle, means a slow down in the down movement. Look at the four hour chart, you can see as real estate possibly bottomed out, it's going to spring up somewhere at that 7650 mark. Don't know. We'll continue to watch, see what there is to see there. But do keep an eye. Remember how real estate was affected by the market crash. Uh, lastly, we go to oil. Now, I am seriously considering switching over to DBO. However, because we have been waiting for the longest time for a potential weekly vertical crossover going up, that may be occurring over the course of this week. Oil was up 3.33%. Going to hold off until we see what happens with this potential weekly vertical crossover if it gives you a jumping in point to practice trade oil at the bottom it has hit or if it just loses that and just won't do it, then I'll switch over to DBO probably quicker. So what do we see on the two-day chart? We see it pulling away from the 200-period moving average line. Derivative os That's on the price percent oscillator. Derivative oscillator continuing to lose momentum. Market really just sliding sideways is what that two-day chart shows. That's the first day of the latest two-day candle. We do see on the uh, half-day chart, 
almost said four hours. It's 195 minutes is, act, is the accurate half day, not two full hours. Uh, so what do, or four, I'm sorry, four full hours, uh, two of those candles each day, 195 minutes. So what do we see? See up movement in the morning, more up movement in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator hasn't crossed over. Getting closer, derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. So we'll continue to see where oil is going to go. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day. We thank you so much for being with us. We are closing out all of our members, all of the students who are going to be allowed to take the Accelerated Market Mastery course. Uh, we have a few spots left. If you are interested, we need to hear from you before we fill all of them up and close it out. It will start in mid-July. It is our intense Accelerated Market Mastery course on options, charting, and building your own vir virtual personal wealth fund. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day. God bless all the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters. Feel free to write us, cw at chartingwealth.com.